Well, hello again. Welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Paul Shrimp, Eric Svelgoy. How you doing, sir? I'm good. Uh, in the bunker, and uh, actually the weather has definitely turned fallish. Uh, yes, I know that I had been sleeping with the windows open or with the air conditioning on, but the last couple of nights, it has been downright chilly. Extra blankets on the bed. Yes, indeed. The, yeah, the, the, the tide has turned. It looks like uh, the crop is coming in and a lot of places coming in really fast, which is, uh, which is good to see. I'm sure that's not the place, not, not, not that everywhere. We don't want a lot of emails about how, what am I, I don't know what I'm talking about, but certainly on Twitter, we're seeing, uh, seeing that move fast and furious in a lot of places. So uh, uh, hopefully that continues and we can get on to fall fertilizer season and, and, and swiftly move through uh, what hopefully, hopefully will be some, some profitable days for retailers. I think we've, we've heard the, 20, you know, the 2021 seasons come out very well. Um, and 2022 is looking good, although there's a lot of a lot of wild cards there. We've got supply issues, we've got price issues. Um, I guess the good thing is maybe the I guess it's good that the price issue isn't going away because no one's going to be sitting on some high price product if they've bought in advance and did what they were supposed to do. Um, and by most indications, 22 should be a pretty solid year again for retail um, and for growers. But 23 is kind of the wild card. Uh, and um, so we're, you know, I guess we'll be taking a look at the maybe ways that uh, folks can get prepared for that 23 season uh, and off season as it comes. Uh, but, but right now, um, if you've got the product and it's in place and you think you can cover what you got, that's great. If you don't, um, you know, the things in, that are happening in China from, uh, uh, you know, from the Olympics and the cutbacks in electricity and, and some of the things that are happening at the plant level, where plants are open and closed, and and uh, they're maybe in some cases in peril in terms of, of, of business. It's just a really really uncertain time. It's a really good time to have a solid hold on where your supplies are for 22. Yeah, actually, Paul, I've heard exactly the same thing from multiple sources as well. In fact, one of the items I had to share kind of ties into that. Uh, just kind of lead into that though a little bit that the fact that uh, you know it. Yes, it sounds like a lot of people had a good 2021. Um, and so a lot of the progressive thinking growers sounds like they're already booking their uh, input uh, prices now, uh, booking their inputs for next year, booking, you know, locking in the prices now so they don't have to deal with any volatility potential coming in 2022. But I know I ran across an item that was talking about fertilizer pricing in particular that, you know, the fertilizer prices are going up and can expect to continue to rise. Uh, this article cited natural gas prices in Europe, which are, I guess, going through the roof and also mentioned coal prices and the restrictions, like you mentioned, in China, cutting into the manufacturing ability for both of those uh, places around the globe. And that in particular is affecting ammonia production in Europe and urea production in China. So uh, again, like you said, it, uh, it sounds like it could be a bit of an adventure price-wise, supply-wise as we go into 2022. But for folks who uh, can lock in now, might as well do it. Yep. And the local story had uh, natural gas going up something like 180% or something like that, which... Yep, yep. We haven't seen that. Uh, we haven't seen a big increase in natural gas in a long time, which you know will make it rough on a lot of folks. Um, eat into the uh, available income this winter uh, if we do have a rough winter. So we'll be watching carefully. Yes, we will. Yeah, that's something to be determined as we go forward. But yes, we'll all have to keep an eye on that. And of course, we'll keep our viewers up to date as we find out more information as we go forward here throughout the rest of 2021 and into next year. You betcha. Uh, so what else you got, sir? Well, one other item to mention just sort of is a, uh, I guess this is something to keep an eye on for the future, uh, but near term sounds like things will be okay. As, as you might remember, Paul, of course, there were some issues with dicamba registrations in the EPA and, you know, I guess the original label was invalidated and the EPA had to re-up uh, the registration for five years uh, going into last year's fall season. Um, and actually, uh, you know, there were no problems in 2021 with the label for dicamba and usage among growers. Uh, but EPA has warned that they're still evaluating new information, even now, uh, on dicamba registration. Uh, 
and that uh, they're assuring uh, growers and retailers that that camba will be able to be used for the upcoming 2022 season. Uh, but they say that based on their reviews that uh, after 2022, there may be questions about that can be usage once, once again. So um, I guess more of the same, we'll just have to keep an eye on dicamba. I know it's been having a little bit of a troubled time since it entered the market in mass in uh, 17. And I guess uh, the next year will be clear, but after that, uh, all bets are off. By turning up the jets on R&D and herbicide, and uh, we control uh, <laughs> the next 12 months, I imagine. Yes, yes, yes. So, Paul, now it's time for your favorite segment. Fun with number. All right. Yeah, so we got a nice low number this, this week, uh, 19%. And it ties back to something we were just talking about at the top of this video uh, and also our Crop Life 100. So go, go with that as your clue. 19%. Wow. Hmm. You know, I don't, I don't have a guess. I'm sorry. Uh, oh. Okay, what were we just talking about at the top of the video? We're talking about fertilizer prices going up. Now, actually, I was sat in on a, 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 a video conference with Dr. Michael Swanson from Wells Fargo not too long ago, and he mentioned that the 10-year average for fertilizer prices, uh, the last 10 years, uh, averaged about 19% of uh, growers' corn yield. So about 19% was going to fertilizer costs for the grower. Now, I'll give you some perspective on that. Uh, on average in a year, uh, cash rents are about 25% of corn yield prices for growers. Machinery is about 17%, seeds about 13%. In 2020, it was a pretty good year for fertilizer. Like I said, 10-year average was 19%, was only 15% for 2020. But the warning signs are there. Uh, according to Dr. Swanson, the spot prices for fertilizer prices going into the 2022 season look like they're going to be about 24 to 25% of corn yield for growers. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, we've been talking about fertilizer prices going up and based on the trend line in the future uh, for next year, it looks like, yeah, they are going to be up about six, maybe 7%. And uh, that I'm sure will be causing some headaches for growers. Cause like I say, cash rents are about a quarter of their crop uh, corn yield uh, price wise. And uh, you know, it looks like fertilizer may be another quarter. So that could be a lot of money for just two parts of the grower equation in 2022. Yep. Well, you know, I guess this would be an opportunity for retailers to really be that partner to growers. Um, given the high level of publicity on, on, on all the price increases that we're seeing in the supply chain, you know, it, it's, it's not something that can be helped simply by slashing prices. Um, if everybody's in the same boat, um, then it becomes, how do we help you do the most for the least? Um, and retailers can be that consultant and it can be that uh, authority in helping them do that. Um, because again, <laughs> sometimes when price increases come, you know, the, the skepticism you know, and the eyebrows raise, like, how are you guys trying to take me to the cleaners? Like, no, this is, this is across the board. Everybody's dealing with it. Let us help you to figure this out because we're kind of all in the same boat. So um, hopefully folks are, I'm sure that's something folks are already working on, but uh, hopefully that's, a, that's a, uh, something they can exploit. Uh, as far as um, as far as an advantage in working with their farmers and hopefully you know earn some pro earn some loyalty uh, once we get through this uh, what will be you know a challenging year at least from the planning standpoint to make sure all the uh, all the everything pencils out so that they're uh, they're able to make a profit uh, in 2022. Yep, yep. So one final thing to mention before we go off uh, Crop Life 100 surveys uh, that sent out the third third batch earlier this week. Uh, as of this video's error date, uh, missing about 25 of the surveys. So for those 25 that got surveys in your inbox on Monday, I, I swear I wasn't ransomware or anything like that. 
Uh, it was just me looking for information so I can put out the best report possible for our December issue. So please try to get those surveys back to me here by the 8th of October. So I have time to crunch all the numbers and then put all the stories together that will be in our print magazine come December. Absolutely. Appreciate your support on that. And again, we give all that, we give all these results back to you um, in aggregate so that you can kind of see where the market is. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's hopefully a, a tool that kind of helps you judge how you're doing business wise and, and how others are doing as well and, and find some opportunities and maybe have some discussions with some of your colleagues um, as you head into uh, 22. So please do provide that. It, we we it's a, it's, it's a, we we see it as a service to the industry and hopefully uh, you will as well. And um, I'll just add one thing too that the Precision Ag Vision Conference that we are hosting again this January in Phoenix, uh, we will be releasing uh, releasing all the details here online at thevisionconference.com. It should be our if it's not already up, it'll be up uh, this coming week and. Um, Look forward to seeing you there. It's going to be a really exciting event. Um, but again, that's thevisionconference.com. That's all looking for to, done. Yeah, looking forward to that, Paul. That'd be nice. Absolutely. And thank all of you uh, for joining us. Uh, continued best for a successful fall harvest season, and we'll see you next week. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We'll try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.